Let's turn our Bibles to Book of James. Book of James. We're going to look at chapter 3, verses 3. Actually, verses 1 through 6. James chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. The title message is Watch and Protect Your Tongue. Watch and Protect Your Tongue. James chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which, though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Verse 6, the tongue, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day for us to be alive here on earth. We pray that you be with us here while we all congregate uh, and learn about you today. We pray that you be with Pastor Jay, fill Amen. him with the Holy Ghost, so that way he may preach a convicting sermon unto us so that we may be better Christians in this world. Amen. For this world that we live in, we are just a pilgrim passing by, Lord. We pray that you fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we Amen. may be a good witness and share a testimony. And most importantly, share the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the lost souls out there. Amen. Lord. So that way some, and hopefully many, will, will call to you as their Lord and Savior to save them from the lake of fire. Lord, we are very thankful and grateful that we have a church and solely a Bible-believing church, yes. uh, preaching straight out of the King James Bible. Amen. Lord, we're very grateful for that. We're very grateful for all the men of God who stood, stood here before us uh, and, and fought a good fight uh, for you, Lord God. We're very grateful for that. We pray that you be with the members that are not here today, the brothers and sisters, uh, whether they're ill or for other reasons that they're not here, Lord, we pray for their safety, uh, for their safe travels and mercies, wherever they may, may be about. We also pray for their health, Lord. Please heal them. And we also pray for Pastor Kim's health. Amen. Uh, please be with him, Lord, and be with the family. And be with the Shribes family as well, Lord God. Please comfort them and fill them with the Holy Spirit. And we also pray that you be with Pastor Jay uh, during the Korean sermon, Lord. Please fill Amen. him with the Holy Spirit. Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Watch and protect your tongue. How many of you guys were troublemakers when you were growing up? How many of you guys are troublemakers right now? Right? What does troublemakers do? They cause disruption. Troublemakers cause problems for others. And troublemakers become nuisances. However, we have a troublemaker within ourselves, and that's called our tongue. Oh, Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. We'll look at some verses today. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Think about your tongue today how you've been using your tongue, what's been coming out of your tongue. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So think about that. Every word that comes out of your mouth will be judged. Whether it be good or bad, we know of our you know, pending judgment in the future, the judgment seat of Christ, and unsaved people, you know, white throne judgment. Every man, every man, and every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Then think about it. How many words comes out of your mouth on a daily basis? I mean, your tongue 
determines how good of a Christian you are or how bad of a Christian you are if you're saved. And if you're not saved, your tongue will damn you to hell. You know, every year, about 50 to 60,000 people die of snake bites. Think about that. And especially in countries like Australia, you know, Amazonian jungles, you know, they have a deadly, you know, snakes. And once you get bit without, uh, you know, anti-venom, what happens? You die. What is the main characteristic of a tongue? Tongue is a poison in many cases. You know, with your tongue, you can poison others. With your tongue, you can poison your relationship. With your tongue, you can poison church. With your tongue, you can poison many, many people. The thing is that there's no anti-venom once you poison others with your tongue. You might be sorry about it. You might repent about it. However, devil will use it to bring it back. It will remind certain people why. Because once it comes out of your mouth, you can't take it back. So you have to make sure what comes out of your mouth is godly, holy, and pleasing to God. Believer, as in saved Christians, should be truthful. So everything that comes out of your mouth should be truthful. There shouldn't be lies. Let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 25. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. You know, some people would always ask, what does a Christian look like? What does a Christian look like? What kind of trait does Christian should have? One of the number one, one of the most important things is that Christian should be truthful. Your tongue should say only the truthful things, and it shouldn't be lying. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, it says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Words can either build people up or it could destroy them. The words that comes out of your mouth can either build people around you or it could destroy them. Tongue is like a sharp sword, right? It can really, really slash and hurt people. When people are arguing and when they say hurtful things to each other, what do you think is happening? They are slashing each other little by little, little by little, and then what happens? Sometimes they say the things that they should never say. And it becomes permanent, permanent scar in people's lives. You know, we have a famous saying, loose lips sink ships, right? This small member can hurt many, many people, so many people. Then you need to realize and recognize, man, my tongue, this little member has a lot of power. It can either give me and people around me blessing, or it could curse me and curse people around me. How is that possible? Why? Because what's inside of you will eventually come out of your mouth. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. We're going to look at verse 19. Mark chapter 7, verse 19. Then it is critical that as a Christian, you need to consistently and constantly watch and protect your tongue. Because how many times has your child said some stuff because they heard from your mouth, right? Yes. I mean, you see little two-year-olds saying the F word. Where did they get it from? Great. I mean, did they just suddenly think about that word? No. <laughs> they hear it from somebody. They hear it from someone's tongue, and many times it's their family. Mark chapter 7, verse 19. The Bible says, Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought purging all meats. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, 
blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. And when we look at verse 20 again, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. Whatever you put into yourself will eventually come out. That's why you have to be careful what you see and what you constantly think about. You know, there was a story where there are three pastors on a boat fishing. And it got boring. And I guess pastors got convicted. So first pastor goes, you know, I have something to confess, fellow pastors. You know, I could trust you guys. You know, and I have a drinking problem. You know, when people don't watch, you know, I drive far away from my town and I drink. And the second pastor goes, yeah, I have a problem too. You know, I have a gambling problem, right? You know, one time, and I received money for missionaries. And then I went to Vegas and gambled it away. Don't tell anybody, guys. And third guy, third pastor goes, you know what? I should have gone first because I'm a gossiper. <laughs> right? As you can see, if you're not telling truth out of your mouth, you're telling lies. Right? And gossiping can hurt people and gossiping will ultimately hurt the church. Yes. I mean, there's another illustration where this woman was constantly gossiping about the pastor. Wherever pastor goes, she goes, oh, he's having an affair. He parked in front of so-and-so's house. So pastor, you know, using some of his wisdom, parked his car in front of her house for two weeks. <laughs> and gossiping stopped. It is your responsibility, it is my responsibility to use the tongue in a godly way. Amen. If you like to gossip, just think about who the father of lies are. Is, right? Yes. Turn to John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. If you're in the habit of lying, then you are following this person. And as a Christian, as someone who has, you know, our Father in heaven, right? You should be following his traits, but instead you're following the traits of the devil. John chapter 8, verse 44, the Bible says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So think about it. Every time you lie, every time your tongue does not speak the truth, you are saying, you know what? I like what Satan is doing because Satan's a liar. Because Satan is father of lies. Before you lie next time to your loved ones, Think about who you're pleasing. If you're not pleasing God, then you're pleasing the devil. And best way to please the devil is keep on lying, right? Yes. You know, gossip about certain things. You know, something about gossiping is that people never do fact checks, right? This day and age, you know, people in this world never does any kind of fact check. Whatever they hear from the media, social media, whatever they hear from somebody, they think it's the 100% truth, right? You know, whatever you hear about pandemic, whatever you hear about economy, whatever you hear about, you know, false doctrines, and then you're like, okay, that must be true. And then you just follow blindly. And you're like that blind sheep going to a slaughter. You just don't know that your end is nothing but slaughter waiting for you. If you're that type of person where your tongue can stay, it cannot stay still, right? Your tongue loves to share news. You know, whether it's a good news or bad news, you just have to share it. And you, if you don't have any news to share, you have to create it, <laughs> right? 
they're those type of people, especially people who destroy the church, make things up all the time. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, so-and-so, right? I think, and then they always use I think or they say, someone said, they said. I don't know, who's they, right? Uh, you hear it sometimes, right? Someone comes up to you, you know, hey, brother, you know, they said that this about this person. Hey, sister, you know, they said about this, about this sister, this brother, and they said this about the pastor and pastor's wife. And then you ask him, who's they? Why is it always anonymous, right? Why? Because it's actually coming straight from them, their defiled heart. They think that way, they feel that way, and so they use this they, anonymous person, as their alibi when in truth, it's their wicked heart feeling that and saying that and spreading those rumors. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalms 101, verse 5. So what are the ways that people lie? Psalms 101, look up Psalms, verse 101. Uh, chapter 101, look up Psalms, chapter 101. We're going to look at verse 5. Psalms 101, verse 5, the Bible says, Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. So slander. Slandering is a lying. It's a wicked sin. According to the you know, dictionary, it says, A malicious, false, defamatory statement or report. So he's someone who has a bad intention malicious intention, and just spreading lies to people. That's where bad rumors start, right? You know, sometimes in order to attack the pastors, someone will say, just like that woman in the beginning of the message, will start spreading false rumors. You know, oh, pastors, you know, having an affair with that lady just because Carl was there, right? You know, that pastor's wife is doing something wicked. And then you start putting seed into congregation, and what happens? When there's doubt, then people start believing it. Why is that so, so, I guess, important, and it's like something a devil would love to use? Because back in Genesis, what did Satan first say? Yea, hath God said. He started making Eve doubt, and Eve fell. So there's a famous atheist group in England so, they don't believe in God. So, what kind of campaign did they do? They didn't say there is no God. They didn't say God is not there, right? right. So, their motto was that there probably isn't a God. They wanted to put a doubt in people's heart. Probably there's no God, right? right. Then what happens? People who are weak in faith, People who's on the fence, they'll be like, maybe not, maybe not. And they start listening to these wicked doctrines, you know, things like that. You should never, ever use your tongue to spread a rumor or slander anybody in the church. I mean, you're one body in Christ, as we saw in, you know, Ephesians 4.25. Stop lying about your neighbor. Stop lying about your Christian brethren. You know, if they've done something wrong, you think, talk to them personally. Yeah. That's the Bible way. You have to see them face to face. And whenever you can't do that, that means that probably what you are thinking and what you are spreading is wrong. Sure. You don't have the guts, you don't have the courage, and you don't have the conviction, and you don't have the 100% faith, a 100% conviction that the other person is wrong, then why do you even say it? You know, there was an the example of a pastor. So there was a member in the church who loved to spread rumors about the pastor, about pastor's wife, about the children, about everybody. I mean, that person was known as a slanderer, 
gossiper. But he got right with the Lord. And then he repented, and then he went to the pastor. Pastor, how can I make things right? The pastor said, you know what? Here's a pillow full of feathers. I want you to go outside that door and swing it everywhere. So he was out there for a few minutes. He swung the feather everywhere. You know, pastor's right there next to him. And he came, pastor, you know, everything inside the pillow just flew away. This feather just flew away. Now I want you to go grab every single feather. Go everywhere. And the man goes, that's impossible. He went everywhere. Pastor goes, that's what your rumors did. Your rumors went everywhere. And you can't get it back. The damage is done. You know, Lord forgives for sure. However, certain things that you do, certain sins that you commit, it will never be forgotten. He forgives. Maybe you've done something wrong to somebody, and it became public, and then you publicly, you know, confess your sins and repent. However, it's never forgotten. Think about that. And if that other person who got hurt is not as forgiving like the Lord Jesus Christ, and is not living, you know, spiritual life, what's going to happen? Devil's going to use that opportunity to constantly remind them. When you look at that person, think about what they said about you. Think about how much damage they did to your wife, your children, to yourself, and to the ministry. Then what's going to happen? There can't be that camaraderie. There can't be that, you know, loving Christ. There can't be that, you know, ministry where you're, everybody's you know, on the same page. That's why many churches where people do not talk to each other, each other for many, many years. Literally, they sit you know, where Brother Bogey is. You know, they sit you know, where Sister Colin is, right? And they don't talk to each other. It could be, you know, there's you know, Brother Kevin there. You know, there's Brother Everett there and Mrs. Everett. They're sitting behind each other, in front of each other. They don't talk to each other for 17 years, 20 years. Why? Because someone's feeling got hurt. Because someone did something wrong. Because a lot of times it's because of gossip and slander. Little whisper, little gossip, it would destroy reputation. And not only that, again, it's irreparable damage. It's irreparable. That's why before you say something out of your mouth, think about it. Think about how much damage, how much poison it will spread. If it's not good, don't even talk about it. I mean, that's, that's why, like, you know, Pastor Kim or anybody, you know, you talk to will be like, you know, if, if, nothing, if you have nothing good to talk about that person, don't talk about it. Right. Like, what good comes off of it, right? Nothing. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, you know, I don't see that brother every Sunday, you know. Maybe he's backsliding, right? Well, I don't see that sister, you know, for street preaching or visitation. You know, maybe they're not right with the Lord. Man, how do you know and what do you know about their personal life? Right. I mean, they could be ill. Yeah. They're sick. What do you want them to do? Come and spread the germs to everybody because of you? Right? Or they could be going through hardships right. you know, that you and I may not know. Exactly. So it's not for you to judge, right? You judge yourself. But it's not for you to judge other brethren and their personal life. Yeah. It's not for you. Because what happens is that, again, we saw in you know, Mark chapter 7, it's going to eventually come out of you. So you, can't even, you shouldn't even think about it. You're like, you know what? I'm just going to keep it to myself. You know, people, a lot of people fall into that you know, trap. I'm going to just think about myself. Man, so-and-so's not there today, not there today, not there, not there, not there. But man, my family's here, you know. We're the faithful ones, right? And then you're like, I'm, you know, it's just, I'm just thinking on my own. And suddenly, you're having conversation with, you know, 
somebody, and it just comes out. You know, when church attendance comes out, like, you know, you know, I, we come all the time, but, you know, like last time they weren't there and stuff. You know, I wonder what's wrong with them. And, you know, and then you don't even know you're talking about it. Sometimes unconsciously you just start talking about things. Why? Because it's inside of you. So the solution is what? Solution is that you don't think about it at all. Simple. Amen. I mean, if I don't think that way, then I'm not going to say it that way. Like, you know, if I don't like, put down other people in the first place, then my mouth will not put down other people in the first place. Right? You know, if I don't think of, you know, pastor and pastor's wife in any wrong way, there's no reason that my mouth will show or say anything wrong about pastor or pastor's wife. Only reason it comes out is that because you've been thinking about it. So there are slanders, right? Then who else is there? There are tail bearers, right? Tattlers. And these are the people, again, I mentioned, they love to share the news. You know, slander is just, it's malicious, malicious. You start rumors, you attack people. But these tail bearers, you know, tattlers, they just love people's attention. Like, so-and-so is our, you know, breaking news person, right? You do not want to be that person. You do, you do not want to be that person. Hey, you know, if I need a news, I go to that person, right? Because... They love to share whether it's factually correct or not. They just share. And then what does sharing turn into? They turn into gossiping. And they're the one who uses you know, those pronouns they a lot. Like, they said it. You know, they said it. You ask him who's they, I can't tell you. you know? um, I keep my sources. They suddenly, you know, people start to think that they're reporters inside the church. Can you believe it, right? You're like paparazzi. You know, instead of taking care of your own tongue, you want to look at every other's tongue. Right? And then you want to make sure that you take picture of it. And if you don't take picture of it, funny thing, you want to read their lips. What happens when you try to read people's lips? You know, you're going to misunderstand sometimes, right? And especially if you could only see half of the lips, you know, I mean, if Isaac could understand what I'm saying, you know, he has special talent, but if he could only see like half of my lips, you know, he's going to mis, you know, understand or misrepresent. You do not want to be that tail bearer. You don't want to be that tattlers, right? Why would you want to be that person who lies about others? who lies about the ministry, who lies about, you know, God, who lies about what the Bible says. That's why, again, I harbor back to it. There's so many liars on TV, social media, yes. behind the pulpits. Sure. And they're telling all this lie about, you know, works by salvation, they can't understand tribulation. They don't know dispensationalism. And then they sum everything up and they interpret in their own understanding. And people think that those lies are truth. People's listening and people's here, you're here mainly because you weigh the evidence. Amen. You do fact check, sure. right? Don't listen to all the tongues that you hear who says, I preach the gospel? I preach what's right in the word of God. You have to check. You have to do your own diligence. I think the saddest people are the ones that, who go down with those false teachers and preachers, right? Yes. They teach, say, for example, they teach, you know, works by salvation. You will never know where you're going to die. I mean, where you're going to go after you die. Because your salvation is through works. Then this person does not trust the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone as their Lord and Savior. They think that they have to trust the Lord. They have to trust good works to go to heaven. And when they die, they're going to wake up in hell. 
But however, God gives everyone a chance. God gives you, God gives me, God gives everyone a chance to get saved. Amen. Then you have no excuse. And people always will say, oh, what about those you know, people like in the middle of nowhere who never heard the gospel? And if they follow their conscience, God's going to send them the gospel. Amen. Right? Praise you God. know? And if the kids don't know, you know good and evil, right, they're going to go to heaven as well. Yes. Yeah, right? Yes. So yes. before you bring on those you know, doctrines that you were misled, you, know, you don't know what you're talking about, just go to our channel and start typing in the title and study. Yes. Yeah, study instead of you know, bringing up a blanket statement. Yes. You know, people are full of blanket statements. What you thought about, you know, tribulation is wrong. Give me a verse. Give me an explanation. Why? Right? What you thought about, you know, once saved, always saved is wrong. Give me a verse. In the full context, right, you and I could always pick out something. Pick out a verse, you know. I mean, I mean, Bible verse does say, right, Whosoever endures until the end will be saved, right? For tribulation, folks. Yeah, don't, don't just do that. You know, see the whole context, yes. right? Yes. And if you've been that type of person, you know, think about it. Think about where you are. I mean, are you really saved? Have you been listening to right tongue of preaching and teaching? Have you been reading the right word of God? And determine. Because you never want to take chance. You never want to take chance of burning in hell. Because you think you're saved. Because you heard some tongue, right? Somebody told you that, hey, you're saved. And you prayed after me, so you're saved. I mean, you have no idea what you prayed about. Especially young ones growing up in church. You know, sometimes, like, you know, they just pray because their parents or some preacher says, okay, let's pray. You, know, you do your sinner's prayer, and you have no idea what you prayed about. You don't know you're a sinner. You don't know who died for you, right? You don't know that blood of Christ washes away all your sins, yeah? And then you think you're saved because someone from the pulpit is lying to you constantly. You're saved, you're saved, you're saved, without even checking. Then if you're in one of those places, shouldn't you just wake up? Shouldn't light up, you know? To be, you know, getting brighter and brighter. Hey, man, am I really saved? What kind of tongue have I been listening to? Right? So watch out, you know, Christians, about slandering, you know, tail-bearing. And other one, let's turn to Psalms 55. Psalms 55. So these are all forms of lying. So don't think that you're not a liar. And when you do lie, you're imitating, you know, the devil, right? right. Psalms 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn sores. So what is this? This is... Flattery, right? Insinc insincere praise. Saying things without meaning it. How many times do you get in trouble because you say something that you don't mean it, right? You're having a conversation with your loved ones, and they get hurt, and you say, I didn't mean it. You know, you talk about their looks. I didn't mean it, right? You talk about their lifestyle. You talk about their spiritual state. You talk about many things. And you say, I didn't mean it. And a lot of times, you know, you got be, you to gotta, you gotta be careful with your exaggeration and flattery. Right? Just tell the truth. Yes. Right? But be careful, though, you know, when you're talking to your wife and your husband, right? You have to make sure that whoever you talk to know that you're telling them the truth. 
once that trust is broken, once they know that your tongue is full of flattery and exaggeration, they won't believe you anymore. How can a relationship last if people start, you know, they're not trusting each other? If what he says, 50% is true and 50% is false, I'd rather not believe him at all yes. because I don't want to you know, be lied to. Who in this room wants to have a liar as their friend? No, thank you. I mean, who? Who's like, you know what? I love to have liars as my friend. You know, they make me feel good. Ask politicians, right? I mean, they're always around liars everywhere. I mean, and they themselves are liars, right? You know, they look at someone's hair, man, it's great, but inside, man, that's the ugliest hair I've ever seen, right? You know, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, you're dressed very well. They're like, oh, man, that's not a good dress, you know, just like what we just read. Yeah. I mean, they say this flattery, but inside is full of, you know, war and sword. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to be that liar who uses flattery and exaggeration to get close to people. Why would you do that? That's a lie. I mean, just tell it like it is. If it's going to hurt them, then just wait. You know, pray about it. You know, let the Lord open the door, Amen. right? I mean, you don't want to be too gung-ho about it, right? You know, without even prayer, you know, without even getting some counsel. And then you see some brother or sister sinning. You suddenly take your King James Bible, pick out a verse or take out the verse and start preaching at them. You don't want to be that person. That's proud person. That's a person who thinks they know better than the others. You don't want to be that person who you think you know more than the others. So you use that opportunity. You use that opportunity to use your tongue to put other people down. Your job, your tongue's job is to build up people. Your tongue's job is to lead people in the right direction. Yes. Right. I mean, think about it. You know, James chapter 3, we read, you know, we read those verses, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You see how that great ship, right, can be moved by, you know, a little help. You see how horses can be moved. I mean, horses are big yeah. by the bits in their mouths. You see how your tongue can defile the whole body. However, according to James chapter 3, verse 10, it could also be a blessing. Amen. You know, you could also bring curse, but it could bring blessing. Yeah. You want to be that person who uses their tongue to bring blessing. Amen. You want to be that person who uses their tongue to bring glory to God. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. You and I should be using our tongue to glorify God, sing praises, and tell others about Jesus Christ. That should be our most talking points. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 2. I mean, this is great, great, great advice. And it's a great, great verse. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. You know, they say, if you don't talk a lot, you look wise. You, know? like, you look wiser than someone who talks so much, and they become a fool. I'm not saying that, you know, again, you stop talking about certain things. You know, important things you always talk about. You always, you know, preach the word in season, out of season. However, your little tongue, you don't want to use it to gossip and hurt people. You don't want to use it to talk about other people in any negative way. If you've done it in the past, and if you're doing it right now, you have to get right with the Lord. Amen. Why? Because God's not going to let you get away with it. Especially if you're using your tongue to hurt your own members, 
right? Yeah. We're all one body, and you're hurting each other, and you're hurting the pastor, pastor's wife, and pastor's family. You know, God's not going to let you get away with it. You know, Galatians chapter 6, you reap what you sow. I have never, you know, coming to our church for, you know, over like 23, 24 years, I have not seen a gossiper blessed by God. I'll tell you that. I haven't seen slanderers, talebearers blessed by God, right? They usually become isolated because people start understanding, hey, you're a liar. Why should I talk to you? Because you're going to twist things. Think about it. If someone comes to you and lies to you about a brethren, I guarantee you they're going to lie about you to another brethren. Simple as that. Yes. Like, you know what? I trust you, and you're the only one I'm going to tell you this about. So-and-so, so-and-so is going through this, doing that, you know, you know, pastor, pastor, wife, you know, children, blah, blah, blah. But I know you're not going to tell anybody. What do you know? A week later, you hear that this same terror bay or gossiper is talking about you. It's poisonous. It's contagious. You know, you have to be honest before God and before man. You know, first be honest before God. Then, how can you get victory over this tongue, right? How do you control it, right? Again, tongue can be a bless or curse. You have to love the truth. Number one, you have to love the truth. People lie. You and I lie because we're liars. We're born as liars. No one has to teach us how to lie. Little kids, they already lie, right? You know, as they're growing up, you know, even though they don't need to cry, they start crying because mommy and daddy will come and help them. And they start crying. And as they grow up, especially if your parents do not teach them that you're, what you're saying is a lie, they think everything's okay. What do you think? Why do you think all these kids turn out to be who they are recently, especially recent generation? Why? Because their parents just let them do whatever they want. They say lie is a truth, right? right. They say white is black and black is white. Then you expect them to love the truth. You expect them to really love the Lord. You expect them to get saved. Many times they don't. Why? Right. You want to have a victory over your tongue. You want your family to have victory over your tongue. You have to love the truth. Amen. You need to stay in the word of God. You have to constantly pray and you have to constantly watch and protect your own mouth and your family and loved one's mouth. Again, what comes out is based on what you put in. The more junk you put in, in your mouth, your tongue, it's going to come out. Yes. You know, there's a sad story. This preacher loved to joke around. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, just fun jokes. Telling dirty jokes. There was a revival. And it's, you know, it's told by Dr. Ruckman. So when he was 15, this farmer went to this guy who has dirty mouth. He's a preacher and started preaching about salvation. 15-year-old got so convicted, he was coming to the altar. But the preacher said the dirtiest joke ever. The person said that completely stopped him. He was about to get saved, convicted. He went back to his chair. 66 years later, he's 81 now. He came to Dr. Ruckman's preaching, and he got saved. And he told to Dr. Ruckman, you know, that's what happened. 66 years ago, I was, gonna get, I, I was ready to accept the Lord, but that preacher said the dirtiest joke I ever heard from the pulpit. Think about it. This person lost 66 years of service that he could have done for the Lord. Right. 
it's not a guarantee, but you know, he could have done something. Yeah. And 66 years later, he accepted Christ. He's told Dr. Ruckman, like, you know, I don't want to lose this feeling, you know, this conviction. Sometimes you and I don't realize how much damage our tongue can have on someone else and how much blessing it can have on someone else. When you tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel, when you encourage each other, when you build each other up, then you're going to have good fruits. Then you're going to really, really, really understand the importance of using tongue in the right way. However, if you use it to gossip, flatter, continuously tell lies, what's going to happen? You're going to continue to hurt yourself, hurt others, hurt the ministry, and just, you know, be a bad testimony for Lord Jesus Christ. Your tongue can direct and has the power to destroy, hurt, harm others, and ultimately yourself. You want to use it, again, to build people up. When was the last time you said an encouraging word to your brethren? When was the last time you said a, an encouraging word to your own family? Your mom, your dad, your wife, your husband. You know, lovely looks is not enough. You got to use your tongue. Use it. Will you ever use it for glory of God? How will your... I mean, how will you use your tongue? Have you ever used it recently to bring someone to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you using it constantly, giving thanks to the Lord? Have you been praying and using your tongue, giving glory to God, letting Holy Spirit control your life? There are many, many, many ways for you to use your tongue in a godly way, and all the answers in the book. Why have you been neglecting your tongue? Remember, this little tongue, even though it's a little member, it could kindle a fire. Just like all the you know, fires going on recently in California, where you know, a little smaller than a few inch you know, match could destroy hundreds, thousands, even millions of acres. Your tongue can do the same damage. However, your tongue can also glorify God, bring others to Christ, and encourage your brethren in the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, sometimes we forget and we just neglect our small member, our tongue. It has the power, Lord God, to literally destroy others, lift others, lead people to the Lord, and discourage people from the Lord. Sometimes we use it to gossip, slander, pastors, church ministry, pastors' wives, children, brothers, and sisters. And we're being used by the devil. We're lying about them. Because at the end of the day, all this slandering, flattery, exaggeration, you know, tail bearing, it's all just a lie. And the devil is the father of lies, and we conform to the devil and just make devil happy and not glorify God. Lord God, help us to just look back at our ways and how we've been using tongue. Help us get right with you, Lord God. And especially with the new year coming, Lord, help us to use our tongue to bring glory to you, lead others to the Lord, and be an you know, encouraging influence to our brethren and lost world out there. I pray that you'll be with those who are under the weather, Lord. Please heal them as soon as possible. And I pray that you'll continue to protect us during these uncertain times. And above all, even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone.